Real or fake news, that is. This weekend, an armed man, Edgar Madison Welch of North Carolina, drove to Comet Ping Pong. It's a pizzeria in Washington, D.C. He wanted to check into a story that's gone viral, known as Pizzagate. He's accused of firing at least one shot from his AR-15 while families were inside the restaurant on Sunday afternoon. So what is Pizzagate? It's the belief that Hillary Clinton and her campaign chair, John Podesta, ran a sex trafficking ring out of Comet Ping Pong. I guess I need to say there is no truth to the story. Fake news has been in the news lately as sites like Facebook have vowed to try and curtail the number of fraudulent stories on social media. But concerns about fake news are now swirling around Michael Flynn. You know him as Donald Trump's pick for national security advisor. Politico found 16 examples of Flynn retweeting conspiracy theories and dubious stories. Perhaps more troubling, Flynn's son and chief of staff, Michael Flynn Jr., sent out a tweet fanning the flames of Pizzagate, saying, quote, until Pizzagate is proven to be false, it will remain a story. Joining me to discuss the proliferation and dangers of fake news are Dante Ramos, editor of the Ideas section of the Boston Globe. Good to see you, Dante. Florence Graves, director of the Schuster Institute for Investigative Journalism at Brandeis. Nice to see you, Florence. See you. And Chris Dempsey was the co-chair, of course, of No Boston Olympics. Good to see you, Thank too, you. Chris. So, Florence, starting with you, is this Comet pizza deal going to be seen as the tipping point or just the speed bump in the, the travails of fake news? I think it's news? going to be the speed bump. I think we're in for more. Uh, I mean, it's been it's been building and building and building, and I think it's going to continue. I mean, Trump is tweeting like crazy. Uh, he is not into real news. He's in. He seems to be into fake news himself. So why would it stop? You know, that, that's. I mean, he doesn't seem to be into fake news. I think that was a modest you don't statement. Think so? He is. No, I'd say he is into <laughs> fake news. Obviously, that thing about millions of people voting well, illegally, I'm a which we know came from that one guy in Texas and info wars. It is true. Is that even though a lot, I think people who hadn't been that concerned just saw this fake news as maybe troubling or upsetting. Mm -hmm. It was dangerous on Sunday. But when the president elect is doing it, as Florence says, it's it's not going away. No, I think the the fact that this guy has turned up at this place in D.C. Um, because of Pizzagate it shows that it's kind of uh, infecting the country from top to bottom. Pizzagate, I mean, think about it. It's almost the stupidest, most preposterous <laughs> thing that you could ever imagine, like, Hillary Clinton is alleged to be running a sex trafficking ring out of a pizza place. And supposedly there's a secret prison for kids and there's pedophile symbols on the walls. I mean, it really it's it's like this is not a thing that exists outside of uh, it doesn't even exist in cartoons. It doesn't make any sense at all. And the fact that people would believe this on a literal level is kind of disturbing. But because it, it, it rings a bell with them. I mean, they want to believe it. They want to believe something horrible about yes, Clinton at all, absolutely. you say. You know, one of the things that was most troubling to me, and it's hard to rate the level of troubling, Chris, of all these <laughs> things, is a spokesperson, well, a, a, you know, a person who's, well, a spokesperson, one of the surrogates for Donald Trump is on CNN all the time, is Scotty Nell Hughes, was on the Diane Rehm radio show on NPR. Listen to what she said about facts. Here she is. There's no such thing, unfortunately, more a fact. And so Mr. Trump's tweet amongst a certain crowd, a large, uh, a large, a large part of the population are true. And she was actually talking about the uh, millions of illegal voters. Two of you smiled during that. One did not. I will not say <laughs> you were the non-smiler well, now that really? she's laughing. Yeah, it, Her again? It, it, well, we're all, I mean, it's preposterous, but at the same time, yeah. truth is in the eye of the beholder in 2016, is it not? Well, so I would say that fabricated news in politics is nothing new. We've been doing that for hundreds of years. But what is new is how quickly it can be shared. In, on social media. Now, I want to defend social media because social media can also be a power for sharing good information. We should say, and, for context, you were one of the, quote, 10, ten guys on Twitter, Twitter, according to that, uh, Marty Walsh, who's trying to disparage the opponents of the Olympics. I'm sorry. Go that's ahead. right. But what, what gets to me is when someone like the president-elect and his team, who I think have a real responsibility to the American public to share good information and right information, are clearly falling down on that responsibility before they've even taken office. I guess we shouldn't be surprised because Trump made his name by sharing fake news around Obama's birth certificate. But it really is troubling that he's the person now in charge. But he can only sell it, Florence, if there's a buyer. And there are That's millions right. of buyers. We like to think the American public is smarter than this. But as you say, it's stuff that they want to believe. It fits a pattern, no? Yes. He's a dog. He's, it's like a dog whistle. He says things that people who feel disenfranchised, 
who feel like they're not part of the mainstream, feel like people have not, none of the politicians have been speaking to their issues, uh, want to hear. And so they've got a platform now. He's listening and they're going to say everything they, you know, they're going to keep responding. So is it part Pogo-esque? I know that there's this notion that obviously the president, he is the president-elect, should behave better. But the enemy is us to a degree. He's giving us well, we're asking, is, is he not? Some of us. Feed us more, I'm, well, at least uh, 62 million people, at least. You know, the, the, I, I was going to say far more troubling, but getting back to what I said before, I don't know how you rate these kinds of things. I mentioned that Michael Flynn Jr., who was on the transition team, may even have had uh, security clearance requested. There's some dispute about this now. He's the son. The father is the national security advisor appointee, and by the way, does not need Senate confirmation. So if Donald Trump wants him, he gets him. Here are just two of these 16 tweets I mentioned a couple of minutes ago. This first one. When is media going to talk about never Hillary executed scientists, maybe just one Hillary victim? And then she, uh, uh, Flynn goes on to retweet. You decide NYPD, New York Police Department, blows whistle on new Hillary emails, money laundering, sex crimes with children. And I say to myself when I hear this, as preposterous as it is, this is the guy who Donald Trump is going to rely on mm -hmm. to separate fact from fiction when it comes to trouble spots around the world. This, to me, is the one that in some ways is even more troubling than Trump himself. What do we do about this? What does anybody do about this? Look, all that we can do at this point is monitor very closely what the guy is doing. I mean, I think it is a function of Donald Trump coming into the presidency with not the A team or the B team or the C team, but the D team or the F team of characters like this who are um, willing to embrace the worst kind of conspiracy the theories and see no particular civic responsibility uh, connected to the positions that they're about to occupy. What if they're not the D or the F team? What if they're the A team? And there's a conscious effort, maybe not, I don't know, coordinated or not, that if we continue to manipulate both the press, which is finally catching up, and then the public, it helps us advance our agenda. Maybe this is not stupidity no, or lack I of information. Exactly it's a conscious thing. That's exactly what they're Even doing. Even General Flynn. Yes. I mean, if he, he wouldn't be able to be, he, would, he couldn't get a national security clearance if he weren't being appointed by Trump. I mean, he had one as a general. But the things that he's doing now and the things that he's saying now, he could not, he would be fired as a general by anyone else. So you think that Trump and Pence are okay with this or else he wouldn't be in the position I that do. he's in? Yes, I do. You know, can we get back to your social media credentials, Mr. Uh, one of 10 uh, guys <laughs> on or people on, on Twitter? Is the solution for this, to, for the social media giants, to heal themselves? Is that what has to happen? Is that the first step here? I mean, Facebook's talking about it uh, through Zuckerberg. Uh, Twitter's talking. I mean, is that how this yeah. gets, quote, fixed, if it gets fixed at all? Well, I would say that you don't solve the broader problem through censorship. You solve it through education. Now, the individual companies like Facebook and Google that have been supporting the proliferation of this bad news, I think it's appropriate for them to say, well, look, we're still going to allow individuals to post this information, but we're not going to put our ads on their sites and vice versa. We're not going to support their ads. I think that's a very fair and ethical business decision. You know, Mark Zuckerberg raised, I think, a pretty important point, uh, Florence. He says on a Sunday Facebook post, mm -hmm. this is an area where I believe we must proceed very carefully. Many stories express an opinion that many will disagree with and flags incorrect, even when factual, I'm confident we can find ways, et cetera, et cetera, but we shouldn't become arbiters of truth ourselves. <laughs> no, but, yeah, you're allowed, but he makes a good point. I mean, a lot of people, when you have strong opinions, and everybody's got a strong opinion in this election cycle, when you see something that you passionately disagree with, even fair-minded people often convince themselves that it's not fact-based. Is that not a fair criticism? Are you laughing at him or uh, me? Well, no, I'm not laughing at you. You can laugh at me anytime I, I know, you want, but that's okay. So, uh, I think he's, he's trying to, to not take responsibility for the fact that he has created this massive uh, news tool. So what should really. he do? What should he do? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think you have to study it. I'm not, you know, shoot at the, shoot at the hip, but I think he does have to start taking some kind of responsibility because what's happening is that was the biggest purveyor of fake yeah. news, according to what I've yeah. heard. And that's very troubling. I mean, he contributed to uh, deciding who was going to be elected. What does Zuckerberg do? Uh, he needs to hire human beings to uh, be editors. Look, he's created something that is the major platform by which a lot of people get their news. Um, news platforms 
in the past have had editors precisely to separate uh, the filth and the nonsense from real news. And um, that's contrary to the business model of, of a lot of Silicon Valley to make everything algorithmic and robotic. Right. But this is what you have to do. These, these fake news things, it is a hack to a system uh, that Facebook created. Dante, it's good to see you. Thanks so much. Good to see you. Florence, pleasure as Great always. To see you. Chris, be Thanks, well. Jim. Good to see you.